Hello and thank you for joining me for this quick look at Over the Moon. What is Over the Moon you may ask? Well, Over the Moon is the directorial debut of Glenn Keane. Glenn has been around the animation industry for a long time. He started off with a career in Disney and was trained by the nine old men of animation. Uh, after 38 years, he left Disney on good terms, saying that there was an, he wanted to explore endless new territories within the animation world. Since then, he has done a short film called Duet, which came out through Google's Spotlight series, a beautiful little dance sequence which was magical to watch, done in traditional hand-drawn style, but using modern techniques. Uh, he's also become an Oscar winner in 2018 for the animated or the best animated short uh, Dear Basketball done with Kobe Bryant. But Over the Moon will be his debut directorial feature. So let's take a look at some of the directorial and framing choices he's made with inside this trailer. First thing we get to see is some of his class, some of the classic 2D drawings which Glenn's really well known for. So I'm super happy to see that he's done a sequence which is definitely an introductory or a storytelling sequence within the pencil drawing field. So I'm really excited that we get to see some of his 2D traditional skills inside the feature. Looking at framing choices, it's always great to just identify really nice framing. Within a simple shot like this, it's great to see we've got, uh, rather than anything um, square, again, uh, again, I say a lot about square framing and within this feature we see a, a lot of diagonals which sort of happen within the flowing lines of the shot. So we've got, um, Foreground elements which are blurry, which, you know, focus your attention away from it. We've got background elements which just add a splash of colour back here. That little, uh, we I dare say, we learn through the story that those lilies are going to be pivotal to, or to the story. So it's nice to see that a lily is included in a shot which is about the parents. Um, and then our focus is definitely on her reaction to her parents' feelings which in storytelling it's often really constructive to use reactions to things happening rather than the actual action you want people to focus on themselves. So it's nice to see that she's dead center, we're meant to focus on her reaction and her feelings about you know, this relationship which is of her parents. And it is a story about the moon, so why not frame the moon with inside the frame? Here we go, look at this. It's very classically using a window frame, which everyone is used to, but it's using a frame within the side the frame to give us this dark border around the outside here. And we do have a character which it comes into being quite a storytelling character you know it's a friend of the main character and of course looking up towards the moon which is a circle which definitely draws people's attentions which i love but it's not center this is what i really like about this frame we've pushed the moon off to the side we've pushed the, maya, the character off to the side and we've got all these leading lines which lead us up to looking at even this moon light. You can see the moon light lighting up around the outside of this main character. It's just a little bit lighter inside that shaft of light, which gets used quite a bit. This shaft of light idea gets used a little bit within the trailer, but we've got this direction up to the moon. I picked out this frame for two particular reasons. The first one is my obsession with diagonals. I know I talk about diagonals a lot, but within this frame, it's just beautiful diagonal lines across the screen rather than being flat. So we've just got these diagonal lines this way. We've got some vertical lines which bring us down. So leading lines within this is really nice, but all these leaves actually give us, you know, a bit of a jagged flow, which helps you know, with this jagged line, there's a good balance. There's a good balance between this top half of this frame over here, and then of course we've got this bottom half down here, which balances the frame both sides, but it's 
off at a skewed angle. And of course our focus is in the middle, which is well lit compared to the darkness of the back and the blurriness of the water. And again, you know, we see featured these lilies, which is really nice theme throughout everything that comes along. I really like this frame for what goes on. Another thing which I felt was really done, really well done within this sequence was the reveals. There were two reveals within this sequence that I thought was really well constructed. The first one is going through what is essentially something we don't see too often, but it's a circular hole in a wall. Now it's obviously an arch, but we're outside the arch. The circle is off center, but it slowly goes through as the camera itself has a bit of a track. We're following the path of the main character here who's running towards the building. So she's going that way, which is nice, but the camera path itself has to come in on a weird angle across. And not only is the camera going across, but with its reveal, it's also doing a tilt upwards. So the tracks are tracking across and the camera is tilting upwards and we end up with a frame that looks like that. As we can see, we, we can just see the edge of the circle here, but the building itself, which is what we're revealing, has now come into the center as we've tilted across and up. We've, we've still got our character down here, so we've seen her move across this way as she moves deeper in the shot to come up to this now having the tower. We still can't see all the way to the top, but we're getting a repetition of this shaft shape in here. And finally, as the trailers progressed along, we've got the moon, which is the center part of the story. It's finally come to being dead center within the frame. Uh, again, you know, I, you, you, anyone who's heard me before, or anyone who, no, I don't need to say that. Why, where's my razor? There it is. We've got to having a frame inside a frame again, as we've pushed the camera forward, just like the last reveal, we've got these clear lines around the outside, which is focused us into what our main thing is. And what's really cool is now this is black on either side. Very, very, very dark. There's nothing in there, but we've still got some leading lines of the handrails, which is taking us up towards, as well as the character's action herself. She is moving up running up the stairway, um, and she is leading us up to this moon, which is up here, which, you know, over the moon, it's a pivotal part of the story. Not all framing has to do within single shots or passing through shots, but a lot of times you've got to construct sequences together and think about how transitions happen between shots. I really like what they've done here with, uh, with this particular cut point. It's, uh, I, I grabbed this, we've got a clear shape here, which she's drawn on the mat, on the ground. We've got a clear shape of her plan of what she's going to build. I thought this was really, really clever. But we can see she's drawn on this piece of paper exactly what's there and what she's after. And these shapes on the paper are really, really nice to see. You know, it's clear that she's got it on the ground. And it's not centered, it's not straight, there's no flat horizontal lines in this. So it's slightly off, which is really cool. Um, and then as we cut to the next shot, we see that all those shapes are laid out in exactly the same place as she's dragging that last one into shape. I thought that was a really clever cut point and a really, way, a really great way of telling her progression from concepting the idea as on a pencil, as a pencil sketch, to then starting to build it and plan what she's gonna make. The last frame I wanna talk about is this one. It's really quite magical in that they've kept it so simple that it is a sky, blue sky, few clouds across the background, but diagonal lines coming down with this beam of light. It's been consistent with that shape um, in that we've got the beam of light coming in, but this then leads us off for the second half or the last 30 seconds of the trailer. It leads us off into the fant fantasy world. 
I, I love the transition from the color scape to the uh, transition to the bright colors, but this, but this beam of light is then what is leads us in to what the film is going to be more about. The trailer, the trailer as a whole is a brilliant way of telling uh, basically act one of the story and it leads us into going, oh my God, there's going to be a lot of other stuff that happens within the film, which is really what you want a trailer to do is to get people excited about watching the whole film, not give away the whole film, but still have enough of a hook to go, oh, I get the idea. Um, maybe I get you know, at least give people inspiration to go, I need to see this because it's going to lead me into a fantasy journey, which is what this one does really, really well. So cutting a trailer itself is a craft that's incredibly hard to do. A lot of people don't get it and a lot of trailers don't hit that mark where you go, I'm salivating for more. But I felt this one did hit that mark really well with the last teaser of like, I think it was 15 seconds of real excitement to go, oh, this is cool. If you haven't seen the trailer, please check it out. I'll leave it in a link below. It is going to be a movie that's going to be awesome and I'm waiting with bated breath to see Over the Moon when it comes out. Leave comments below and until the next time.